Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying an infinite radical expression. So we have the square root of x squared plus the square root of x to the fourth power plus the square root of x to the eighth power. So every time the power is doubled, you go from second to fourth to eighth to sixteenth and so on and so forth. And this goes on forever. And we're supposed to simplify this expression. So infinite radical expressions come in different forms and shapes and this one is a summative one and we can kind of talk about some general strategies for solving these kinds of uh, expressions or equations this is not an equation but if you set it equal to a number let's say one then you can find a particular x value that was my initial plan and then I thought about turning this into an expression great so how do we simplify this I think I'll be showing you two approaches, sort of, uh, but I'm not going to separate them like first and second method. Let's get started. So here's one, I, one of the things that I want you to notice, that the powers double. So whenever we have something inside the radical, we can always take it out. So if you have something like the square root of x squared, and by the way, here I need to assume that x is always positive, otherwise we're going to have to deal with the absolute value, which is not nice. So let's just assume that x is positive, okay? What is the square root of x squared if x is positive? Then it's just going to be x. Make sense? So what happens if you have something like this, though? You have x to the fourth. What is the square root of x to the fourth? Well, it is the same. You just divide 4 by 2. It becomes x squared. Because what number squared is x to the fourth? The answer is x squared. Make sense? And then you can answer the same question for x to the 8th. The square root of x to the 8th is going to be x to the 4th power. Great. Now, with multiplication problems, so suppose we had something like the square root of x squared times the square root of x to the 4th times the square root of x to the 8th, so on and so forth, we could kind of write this expression as a product. Thinking about it this way, this gives us x to the power 2 over 2, which is x, then this gives us x squared, and then this gives us x to the fourth, so on and so forth. I'm not necessarily saying this is going to turn into a nice thing, but if this was a product, we could actually turn this into exponentials. But that's not the case. So what happens with the sum? While sums are a little harder, we kind of have to be very careful, because you're kind of dealing with an infinite sum, but we're going to take these out. That's the general strategy. So we don't see the whole thing, but we can pretty much assume that whatever holds for these terms that we can see is going to hold for the whole thing. Okay? So think about it this way. If I take out x to the 8th, let's clean this up and start over. If you take it out, that's going to give us x to the 4th here. So let's go ahead and bring it outside. So square root of x squared plus the square root of x to the 4th plus this x to the 4th when we take it out. But you're going to have something inside the radical, right? Because you took out the whole thing, you're going to have a 1. And then plus, you're going to have uh, something else inside, right? Let's just put a dot, dot, dot. Okay. So what can I do with this? Now, here's one thing that I want you to notice. You have x to the 4th plus x to the 4th. So you have a common factor, which means you can go ahead and factor this out. And if you do, you're going to get 1 plus 1 times this thing, right? Make sense? And of course, that's going to be under the radical, and that's going to be added to x squared, and that's going to be under another radical. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now, what can I do with this? Well, I ended up with an x to the fourth power here, so I can pull it out again, right? And everything else stays inside. Makes sense because these are being multiplied. Just like this, everything else stayed inside. So when you take out x to the fourth, obviously you're going to get x squared outside the radical. And then inside the radical, you're going to have what is left. 1 plus the square root of 1 dot dot dot. So that's like an infinite sum, right? And of course, let's not forget the outermost radical. So this is what we have so far, and what do you notice? The more you do this, the more <laughs> common factors you're, get, you're getting. So we can go ahead and now factor out x squared. If we do, then we're going to get the following. 1 plus 1 times this whole thing, so it's going to be 
square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus dot 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 so on and so forth and of course there is still an radical on the outside cool cool what's left the last x squared yay if we're able to take it out successfully then we're almost done so now we're going to deal with this take it out and inside you're going to you're not going to have any x's and there's no common factors here. You're just going to take out the last x squared. That's going to be an x on the outside. And then inside you're going to have square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus dot dot dot. Hopefully you get the idea. This gives you a pretty good pattern, hopefully. And x is multiplied by the whole thing. Great. So we were able to extract x out by using several steps. Now, why didn't we go to the x to the power 16? If we did, we would have an x to the eighth on the outside. We would keep pulling it outside to the left, and then we would end up with the exact same thing. Because notice that the dot, dot, dot indicates that this is going to go on forever. And it's the same type of pattern. Every power is doubled, so it's going to work for every piece of this whole expression. Make sense? So here's the million dollar question. What is the expression inside the radical square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus so on and so forth so that's what we're going to evaluate next let's go ahead and do it it's fun and it's actually associated with a very important number called let's not say it right now just a little bit let's wait a little longer so don't say it if you already know the answer let's go ahead and set it equal to hmm how about t t is my favorite variable these days and now I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. And then I'm going to be getting this equals t squared. But guess what? This is the same thing as t. Wow. Is that a surprise? Okay. Pretend to be surprised. And you get 1 plus t equals t squared. Or t squared minus t minus 1 equals 0. Great. And t from here is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 5, divided by 2a. And this gives us two solutions. t is either 1 plus root 5 over 2, which is called the golden ratio, right? And 1 minus root 5 over 2. Here's the problem. This is a positive expression. Do you agree? Yes, right? I mean, it can't be negative. There's no way. So the negative solution will be discarded. Let's go ahead and discard the negative solution. This is less than 0. Uh-oh, that's not good. So this is the answer. Wow, that's t, and I'm multiplying x by t, because this is xt, right? So what is xt? xt is equal to x times 1 plus root 5 over 2. Or if you want to write it as 1 plus root 5 over 2 times x, that will be the answer for this problem. Now let me go ahead and show you the second strategy. Well, I wasn't going to write it second, but okay, you get the idea. Let me show you the other approach. The other approach is basically, first of all, what are we simplifying, right? We have this x to the fourth, x to the eighth, so on and so forth. Here's how the second strategy works. And of course, the second strategy kind of depends on the first one. But if you know it, it's going to be easy. So we start with this. Okay. And we know that it's equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. How do we know that? You can evaluate it. You already know it, right? Great. Now, here's what we're going to do next. We're going to multiply this by x and multiply this by x. And guess what's going to happen on the left-hand side? x is going to go inside as x squared, but there's a plus sign, so it's going to be distributed, and it's going to go again like this. And then this x squared is going to go inside here and here. You're kind of distributing it at the same time. That's going to become x to the fourth plus x to the fourth times blah, blah, blah right? And this x to the fourth is going to go inside. Hopefully you get the point. We're going to get our original expression. Make sense? Okay, great. So what does that tell you? It tells you that this is the answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and if you want to solve an equation, replace uh, this with an equation, and you'll find x. Bye-bye.